Who are you to invent? You are still young. Just quit whatever you are doing and join us to have some fun in Sea Line. Salam alaikum everyone. My name is Mohammed Al Qassabi. I'm an information systems senior at Carnegie Mellon University and the head of robotics and AI department at Qatar Scientific Club. I'm here today to share my journey with you and how my passion about football made me succeed in many other different fields. Uh, since childhood, my favorite hobby has been football, just like everyone else, and I wanted to join a football club so badly, but my parents wanted me to focus more on my academics, since it's more important than football, and that's what I did. I used to play football every weekend with my cousins in my grandfather's house, until that day came that changed my life, I think forever. Uh, it was my turning point. The day was the 2nd of December in 2010. When Qatar, was, uh, when Qatar won uh, the right to host the 2022 World Cup. At that time, I felt that my country is hosting the, the biggest football event or the sport event in the world, and it's happening for the first time in the MENA region. So I wanted to have my, my fingerprint, or I, I wanted to play a, a significant role in my country's success in this big tournament. So one way that I thought of was joining a football club, uh, so hopefully I can play with the national team in this tournament. So I went to my parents again and told them that now is the time to join a football club. They told me it's okay if you get high grades in your school. And that's what I did. But they said there is only one condition, which is I have to balance between my academics and my trainings at matches with the uh, football club. And I agreed on that. I always cheered up for Al Sadd Club, which my father hated. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to join Al Sadd Club, but my father told me it's either Al Ahli or Al Arabic Club. I'm not sure why, whether it's because he hated Al Sad, but he said that uh, it's because Al Ahli and Al Arabi are closer to my home than Al Sad, so I can have more time to study at home before joining the trainings. So I said, okay, it's better than nothing, and I joined Al Arabi Club. And in my second season, I was able to impress the coaches and, was, uh, and I was given the uh, captain sign. And some older players were feeling like kind of jealous because it's, I'm still a new, they are older than me, and, I, and yet I got the sign uh, of the captain. And I used to play, they all used to play one match per week, but I used to play two matches per week, one with my team, and the other uh, match was with the elder team. The elder coach used to call me in many different matches uh, because of my performance. And in 2016, I was uh, called to play with the first team. The first team coach called me to play a football match with their team and I was kind of scared because I was only 16 years old playing against players like they are, their ages between 22 and 35. So it was kind of scary but I was able to get a good impression uh, during the match and I played the whole 90 minutes which was kind of impressive to play the 90, mi the 90 minutes in this age with the uh, first team and also the coach was really impressed by the performance and he called me for another match. So. I think I had a very good career, especially that I played most of my matches with the elder teams. A uh, few years ago, I lost an important match in the semifinals. I remember it was against Al Rayyan, and usually the games between Al Rayyan and Al Arabi are intense and tough because it's the derby here in Doha. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the match, uh, but it was because of a wrong offside call by the referee. So I was really upset and went uh, to uh, went to the referee screaming, "It's offside! Why <laughs> you should stop the uh, goal?" But he said it wasn't offside, and I can't blame him because it's hard for referees to keep track of offside players and take their decisions in milliseconds, especially when there are many players in the same uh, area. Uh, in 2002 World Cup alone uh, in Brazil, there were more than 35 percent of wrong offside calls made by the referees which uh, proves how hard for it is for them to keep track of the offside players and take their decisions in milliseconds. So I thought since modern technologies is solving uh, most of our daily lives problems, why don't we use the uh, technologies to solve these problems and solve the offside problem? But then I thought, why do we wait for others to solve this problem while we have the, all the abil abilities and the skills to do that? So I, I, I was in high school at that time. I did not have many knowledge about technology. So I started to do some research. And that's when I found some small sensors and I was able to uh, build a small prototype with uh, simple sensors that were like moving around the field to keep track of offside uh, violations. Uh, at that time, I remember, uh, there was a competition in Doha for schools. It was a scientific competition. So I decided to participate in that competition with this idea. 
Before the competition, we had to meet some engineers from the organization of the competition to uh, discuss uh, some things about the idea that we are participating with. And also the uh, teachers in our school so they can prove the idea. And both the uh, school teachers and the engineers said that this is uh, unfeasible. You can't implement uh, this idea even after the competition. So try to change the idea. But I insisted that I participate with this idea because I really believed in, believed in this idea and know how much uh, referees suffer to keep track or take their decisions. So I participated with this idea, but I did not win. I was also like really upset because I really believed in this idea, but I thought it's, uh, it's only a competition. Why should I, should I stop now? So a few months later, I participated in a scientific competition for the Gulf countries. It was happening here in Doha. I was the youngest participant, and what I liked the most is that most of the participants liked my idea because they were football fans as well. So they know uh, how much uh, football uh, uh, fans suffer from these kind of things. But I also did not win anything in this competition. I was also upset, but what made me continue was uh, how, uh, how the other uh, competitors liked my idea, especially that they are familiar with these kind of things. So I decided, in, uh, when I was 18 years old, I decided to apply for Stars of Science show, which is for uh, Arabic inventors. And I went all the way to Lebanon to pitch my idea in front of the jury members. And when I did so, uh, the jury one of the jury members said that I don't see this as an uh, invention, and I can't see you as an inventor uh, with this project. So he rejected me. At that time, I felt that there is something wrong. Like, I was rejected and I lost many things in a, few, uh, in a short, time, uh, short time period. So I was really upset and for some few minutes I thought that, okay, it's time to stop and think of anything else. Also, some of my referees told me, uh, some of my friends told me that, why are you doing all of this? You are still young, you can't change the world or change the football rules. Just come join us and we'll go, so we'll go ha have some fun in sea line. But before leaving uh, uh, Lebanon, before coming back to Doha, I had a plan. I thought that the jury member that told me that who, who rejected me was wrong, and I wanted to prove that he was wrong. So two, two weeks later, I started to build uh, another prototype, which was kind of a little bit bigger with using uh, different technology, uh, better technologies than the one I used for school. And uh, I was chosen or nominated by the Qatar Scientific Club and the Ministry of Sports and Culture at that time to participate with the Qatari delegate in the uh, International Invention Fair in the Middle East, which uh, happened in Kuwait in 2019. And suddenly, uh, out of a sudden and surprisingly, I won the gold medal. No one expected that, including me. And I was really happy that, okay, now I, it's, I think I can see this as the beginning of the journey. I won something. Uh, Finally, and now I can begin the journey with this prototype and build it to another level. A uh, few months later, I also participated in Doha Oasis for uh, Innovation, which was part of the uh, Doha, the capital of the Islamic youth competitions. And I also won the gold medal. And I still remember when I won these medals, uh, whenever I had a football match and the referee don't see the offside violation, I will go to him and I'll say, one day I will replace you, or I will replace you with my machine. <laughs> Uh, he was not, he didn't know what I'm talking about, but I know that one day something will happen. So after winning these medals, I thought that, okay, I have a solid prototype for now. It's, uh, this time I have to uh, focus more on the business part. So I have the technology part, so now I have to think of uh, the entrepreneurship part. So I participated in al Fikra competitions, which is uh, for entrepreneurs. And uh, I, there were different phases and I was able to reach the final uh, stage where they chose only three in each category. And uh, when we pitched our ideas, I noticed that I was the only competitor that had no team. They all had like team set up and ready and they were all like old enough to compete and I was the youngest. But after we all pitched and before the uh, winners were announced, some of the competitors uh, came to me and said, congratulations, we think you won and we wish you all the best in your future career. And that's what happened. I won the first place in Al-Fikra competition, the startup category. Uh, I was really proud that I was able to go to, throughout all of this journey, especially being the youngest in most of these competitions. So a few months, few months back, uh, I thought of uh, participating in the Stars of Science again uh, in season 13. I was a little bit nervous because I remembered what happened uh, two years back and how I was rejected and the way I was rejected. Uh, but I said I was advised by Abdurrahman Khamis, who is Stars of Science alumni, to apply and especially that I have university also in the same time. 
So he said, just apply, and then when you get accepted, you can choose whether to drop one semester from your, from your university to complete with uh, Stars of Science show, or you can just uh, drop Stars of Science and complete your uh, semester. I said, I will apply, and I have nothing to lose. So I applied, but this time I felt that I, I was confident that I can go uh, further because I had like a solid prototype and I also uh, gained many different skills throughout my university career and the competitions that I participated in. So I pitched my idea and I also uh, was accepted uh, to be one of the top eight Arab inventors to compete in the Stars of Science show for three months. So at that time I had a hard decision. It's either to compete for three months in Stars of Science or drop and, and drop this uh, one semester from university or drop Stars of Science and complete. I did not want to drop my university because uh, I will graduate late. And at the same time, I wanted uh, so badly to compete in this show because I was rejected once and now I'm accepted. So I thought it, it can be a challenge if I uh, chose both, but I did because I like challenges. And the good thing is that uh, at that time, uh, everything was remotely, I mean university because it was COVID. So I was able to go to Stars of Science Labs from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. to work on my project and at the same time uh, attend my online lectures uh, in the lab. And after 6 p.m. I would go back home to uh, finish my assignments and study for my exams. It was really hectic and I was really exhausted during these three months, but I think it's worth it because I learned many skills, many things that I don't think I will learn in anywhere else for maybe five years. And I, I learned everything in three months. So I was able during these three months to build a fully functional prototype for my project that doesn't only detect offside violations, but also analyze players' performances and injuries during the game. I called it OPAS, which is a shortcut for Offside and Performance Analysis System. So during these three months, we had uh, three main phases, and each phase they will eliminate some of the participants based on, the, uh, based on their progress. So we'll pitch our ideas and the progress in front of the jury members again, and they will eliminate some of us until four reach to the final. Luckily, I was able to get the highest grade or the highest rate from the jury members in all three phases. And in the final stage, I was happy, like no matter uh, which uh, position I take, I am a winner because I have a solid prototype that I can work on after the program. And also the program is on TV, so I have the marketing uh, part where all the stakeholders can see my invention. And I have all the skills that I need to complete my uh, project afterwards. And also one advantage uh, that I have, that I had during the program is that in my major, I study both technology and uh, business, which, which makes me an entrepreneur, unlike other participants who, who are like 100% technical. And the one thing that made me uh, really nervous before the show, or some of, the, uh, some of my family and friends told me, is that I'm competing against like doctors and engineers from all different countries in the MENA region. And I'm the youngest one, and I think the only one who did not finish the university yet. Uh, I was confident because I think during the past few years, I went through many different uh, similar experiences where I uh, competed with people who are older than me, like in football and in other competitions. So I was really, uh, like I believe that age is not a way to measure how skilled I am. So I just continued and I got the highest grade in all three phases. In the final phase, it was 50% based on the jury members' uh, point of view and 50% based on the voting. I was also able to win the uh, jury members' votes. I got the highest grade. And collectively with the uh, voting of the public, I was able to win the third best Arab inventor uh, in Stars of Science this show, uh, season 13. It was a really great achievement to be the third best Arab inventor. And some of my friends uh, thought that this is the end of the journey, but uh, because I won a big thing, but I never thought of it as the end, but as the beginning, because the end will be seeing the project implemented in the football matches. So two weeks later, I also saw an announcement of another competition, which was worldwide this time and happening in Doha, which is an advantage for me since I will be here. So I applied, uh, it was the Challenge and Innovation Forum. Uh, inventors from all over the world came to Doha and competed against each other by presenting their inventions uh, in front of the jury members. I was also able to win the fifth best inventor in the world in the CIF in the 2021, which is also a big uh, achievement, especially that I was also one of the youngest participants in that uh, competition. So at the end, I was, I think I proved what I believed in, which was age is only a number and uh, your degree is only a proof that you have the skills. 
but you might have different skills without a degree from university or anything else. So my, I, I always encourage youth to be active in the community, no matter how young they are. As I said, age is only a number and not a way to measure their skills. As long as they uh, have the uh, passion about what they are doing and work hard, they can achieve anything and nothing can stop them because uh, you can still do whatever you want and age, I don't see it being young, I don't see age as an obstacle, but as an advantage, because as a young person, you can have enough time to work on and achieve many bigger things. And that's all I have for today, and thank you for listening.